No, that's not the sound of an intergalactic villain. It's me breathing heavily and struggling trying to get over this nasty climb. After this ride, I decided to upgrade the gearing on my bike and install the new cassette and chain rings to make it easier to get over these tough hills. The upgrade wasn't that difficult, but there were all kinds of things I didn't even take into consideration. I'll show you in this video. The first thing I did was get a plan together. Ciao ragazzi, welcome to another video. As you just saw, I struggle getting up hills on the Cervelo. I like the Cervelo, but the stock gearing on the bike just doesn't work for me. So I decided to upgrade the gearing on my bike, and because this is a popular upgrade with cycling enthusiasts out there, I decided to make a video about it. Attention, attention. I'm not a bike mechanic, nor do I profess to be one. Let me say that one more time. I'm not a bike mechanic, nor do I profess to be one. If you plan to use anything you see in this video to fix your bicycle, consult with a professional bike mechanic or visit the people at your local friendly bike shop and run up by them before you do. Now let's get back to the video. I started researching gearing upgrades and I found out there's only a couple of options I have. Let me show you with this pictorial. Option one is to change the gears up front. These things are called chain rings. If I make them smaller, the bike's going to be easier to pedal. Now the other option I have is to change the gears at the back. You'll know them as a cassette or a freewheel. If I make them bigger, then the bike is also going to be easier to pedal. But if I change the cassette or freewheel to a larger cog, then I might have to change the derailleur to one with a longer cage. Now the third option is to do option one and two. And you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. I mean, if I do one upgrade and it's easy, two upgrades should make it easier. Whenever I work on little mechanical projects like this, I usually like to make a list of the part numbers that I'm going to work on. It saves me quite a bit of time whenever I'm researching for manuals, spec sheets, or in a store buying a part. All the information is in one place and right at my fingertips. I started with the derailleurs. With all Shimano derailleurs, you'll never find the model number on the front. It's always on the back in tiny, tiny print. Cell phone camera to the rescue. I took a photo of the back of the derailleur and then I zoomed in until I can find the model numbers. And I have uh, an FD 6870, so the FD is for front derailleur. And then an RD 6870, which is a uh, rear derailleur 6870. Now you might be sitting there wondering, why does he need to know the model number of the derailleurs when he's doing a cassette and chain ring upgrade? Indulge me a little bit. You'll see how important these model numbers are as the video goes along. And next, I also made a note of the rear cassette size. Now, if you don't know, uh, when you're looking at cassette sizes, they usually express from the smallest to largest cog, measured in teeth. I found the cog sizes stamped right on the cog. It was really easy to see. So the smallest one I have is an 11, and the largest is a 28. So I got an 1128 cassette. Then I had to find the size of the chain rings, and this was pretty easy because the numbers were silk screened right on the big chain ring. So for me, I had a 5236. Now that that's out of the way, I'm going to make myself a wish list of parts I'm hoping to use in the upgrade. For the chain rings, I wanted to use a set of compact chain rings. The large ring is a 50 tooth and the small one's a 34. I had them on my last bike and I really liked them. For the cassette, I wanted the biggest cog I could fit so that I could get up hills real easy. Several of my friends in the cycling club recommended an 1136. I decided to go with that. Okay, parts list done. Now I gotta find out if these parts are gonna work on my bicycle. And I need to know the capabilities of my derailleurs. See, now it's important to know the derailleur number. Let's start with the chain rings. I went online to get the spec sheet for the front derailleur. I browsed the spec manual to find the largest chain ring that the front derailleur could accommodate. It can work with any chain ring between 46 to 53 teeth. That would mean the 50 teeth chain ring I wanted to buy should be no problem. Now I had to check the total capacity. A what? Yeah, that's what I said when I first saw this term in the specs. You may also hear it called derailleur capacity or sometimes chain slack. It's something I never thought about and sounded really complicated. It wasn't. All I did was use a simple calculation to figure it out. I made sure that the new parts did not exceed the spec for total capacity. If it does, then the derailleurs will not be able to tension the chain properly and you'll end up with bad shifting, or worse, a broken derailleur. You'll find total capacity listed in the derailleur specifications, but you won't find it written anywhere on your bike parts. That's why you have to do a calculation to find out. Here's how to calculate the front derailleur capacity. It's dead simple. All I have to do is find the difference between the largest and smallest chain ring. In my case, that's 50. 
minus 34, and that equals 16. Looking at the spec, I haven't exceeded the derailleur capacity, so I'm good to go. Now I'm going to hang on to this number because I'm going to need it for the rear derailleur calculation. Let's move on to that new cassette I want to get. I had to find the specs for my Shimano rear derailleur, so I grabbed my handy little parts list, looked for the model of the rear derailleur, and jumped online. When I was reviewing the specs, I found out that there are two versions of the 6870 with some minor differences between them. There's the 6870 SS, which is the short cage version, and the smallest cog it can accommodate is an 11 tooth, and the largest is a 28. So the biggest cassette that'll work with it is an 1128. Then there's the 6870 GS, which is the medium cage version. The smallest cog it can accommodate is an 11 tooth, and the largest one is a 32. So the largest cassette it'll work with is an 1132. Well, let's go back to what I wanted to buy. I wanted to get an 1136 cassette, and it looks like it won't work with either one of the derailleurs. The best I can do is an 1132. And you know what? I can live with that. I'm going to modify my wish list from an 1136 cassette to an 1132. Now that I'm settled on the cassette I want to buy, I'm going to have to calculate the rear derailleur's total capacity to make sure it can handle it. In order to do that, I have to do another calculation. And this one is for a two chain ring setup. It's a little more involved than the last one, but it's not that difficult. We'll take it step by step. The first part of the calculation is to find out the difference between the largest and smallest cog on the cassette. In my case, that's 32 minus 11, and that equals 21. The next part is to find out the difference between the largest and smallest chain ring. I did that earlier on, and that was 16. Now all I have to do is add the two numbers together. That's 16 plus 21, and that gives me 37. So I need a derailleur with a capacity of at least 37. Well, the GS version of this derailleur maxes out at 37, so I'd be good to go. But there's only one little problem. I don't know if my derailleur's an SS or a GS. I went back and started looking all over the derailleur for some kind of marking to identify the derailleur as an SS or a GS. The only thing I could find was the model number. I jumped back on the internet and started searching the forums for an answer. The most common answers were to measure the derailleur cage, but I don't understand how that's going to work. Derailleur cages come in all shapes and sizes. Next was that the GS has a longer cage. That wasn't going to work because I don't have both derailleurs in front of me to compare. I eventually found a post with a simple way to find out. Just compare a photo of the SS to the GS. I really like this one and it worked out well. Let me show you. The SS is on the left and the GS is on the right. Right off the bat, you can see the GS has a longer cage. That was the most common answer I found when I did my research, but it's not the only difference between the two. If that was the case, then all I'd have to do is buy a longer cage and swap it out with a shorter one. Well, that won't work. And don't ask how I know that. The other key difference is the body of the derailleur. Look at the body of the SS as compared to the GS. There's a small notch on the SS body. You'll also notice that the body of the GS is larger than that of the SS. This is when I came to the realization, it's not just the longer cage that makes that GS derailleur different. It's actually the physical size that allows it to have a larger derailleur capacity and accept cassettes with big cogs. Right after doing my research, I had a look at the derailleur again and found that little notch that's on the SS version of the 6870. Looks like I have an SS version and if I want to use an 1132 cassette, I should buy a GS derailleur. I didn't want to spend all kinds of money on a brand new derailleur. And even though I know I shouldn't use the SS derailleur with a larger cassette, I was all set to do it until I watched this video by YouTuber Peak Torque titled Why You Shouldn't Use a Short Cage Mech with 1132. He did it and broke his derailleur hanger. I'll put a link to the video in the description below if you want to see the damage it did. Since that didn't work out, I noticed on a lot of the forums, people are using derailleur extenders to put on larger cassettes. I thought I might give it a try. These devices lower your derailleur and make it possible to install a larger cassette. I went to the website for a manufacturer that makes them by the name of Wolftooth. They make a road specific version and had some great information about installing them on bikes with double chain rings. One thing in particular was that their product will provide enough clearance for a larger cassette but it does not increase the derailleur's total capacity. Well, if it doesn't increase the capacity of the SS derailleur, then I'm not going to be able to use the new cassette I want to get. 
Well, so much for the derailleur extender. If I want to use a bigger cassette, I'm going to have to buy a GS derailleur. Not something I wanted to spend my money on, but I'll put it on my wish list as a maybe. Well, the wish list of parts is settled. Time to get out and do some shopping. I took my wish list of parts down to my local friendly bike shop so I could get some pricing on what I wanted to buy. Boy, did I get hit with sticker shock. I couldn't believe the prices I was being quoted for something as simple as a cassette and chain rings. To make matters worse, nothing was in stock and I'd have to wait 4 to 16 weeks for delivery. I really wanted to get this upgrade done during the spring so I could enjoy it throughout the summer. I was curious to know the price for that derailleur I was on the fence about buying. I was told the 6870 was discontinued and the only derailleur that was compatible with my system was the newer RD8050 derailleur at a price of $410 Canadian for a rear derailleur? Ouch. They also told me I'd have to upgrade the firmware on my bike so it would work with the new derailleur. I left that bike shop and you just saw the reason why I hate electronic shifting, no matter which brand, when it comes time to doing an upgrade. I know it's sexy with its smooth and reliable shifting. But when it comes time to doing a simple upgrade, like changing a cassette or chain rings, it requires expensive parts and complex programming even rocket scientists have problems with. Hey, let's take the gravel bike out for a spin. They didn't pack it. Something about not being able to get the new firmware to work with the shifters. They got them to the moon, but they just couldn't figure out how to program those electronic shifters. What a shame. Mm -mm -mm. Let's get back to the video. Since I couldn't find any of the parts I wanted at my local bike shop, I decided to try online. My search for an 1132 cassette proved fruitless, as no store had any stock. I didn't get too discouraged, so I shifted my focus to the next thing on my wish list, those compact chain rings. I specifically wanted to purchase ones made by Rotor to match what I had on my bike. I found a set on the Rotor website for about $250 US. When I tried to complete my order, I found out they didn't ship to Canada. Feeling frustrated, I decided to try Chinese online retailer AliExpress. I've bought all kinds of stuff from AliExpress and the experience has been pretty good. Whenever I had a problem with a seller, AliExpress stepped in to help out. I checked out their site for bicycle parts and they have all kinds of them, although they're not from major brands. Some of the stuff you find is pretty good and other times, eh, not so much. Despite the lack of quality assurance and support, I decided to take a chance. I found several of the parts I wanted in stock. I managed to get an 1132 cassette made by a company named Sunshine for $35 US and I also bought a set of chain rings that claimed to work on 8, 9, 10 and 11 speed drivetrains for the same price. I wasn't sure if they'd be compatible but at 35 bucks, I was willing to take that chance. Next on the wish list was the rear derailleur. I could not find any on AliExpress. As a last resort, I decided to try eBay. I usually don't have very good luck on eBay, but at this point, what did I have to lose? I started looking for a 6870 GS or the newer compatible 8050 GS derailleur. I managed to find some 6870s, but they were either in really bad shape or just way too expensive. I did stumble upon an 8050 GS derailleur with a buy it now or make offer option. I really like the make offer option. It gives me a chance to haggle with the seller and get a better price. I managed to bargain the price down to $200 Canadian all in. That included taxes and shipping. That turned out to be a great price. It's half of what I would have had to pay for a new one here. Well, the orders are in and the parts are on the way. Even though I did all this planning, things still didn't go right. You'll see that in the next video. I'll install the parts, You'll see the result and then I'll go over what went right and what didn't go right. Especially with that DI2 shifting. Boy, what a minefield I had to navigate through to get that thing to work properly. I can really sympathize with those rocket scientists. Anyway, have some questions? You want to add to the conversation? Comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Whoa. Oh no, my car.